axilla. Axilla has an anterior wall, posterior wall, medial and lateral walls, apex and a flow. Nerves and blood vessels passing from the root of the neck to the upper limb has to pass through the axilla. We are going to discuss the axillary region using this specimen. This is the axilla. It lies above the armpit. The flow of the axilla is formed by the deep fascia passing between the chest wall and the upper limb. The axilla has a medial wall formed by the serratus anterior muscle on the lateral chest wall and an anterior wall formed by the pectoralis major underneath that pectoralis minor subclavius and clavipectoral fascia between the pectoralis minor and subclavius muscles. Here you get a posterior wall formed by the latissimus dorsi, teres major and the subscapularis muscle here. The pectoralis major muscle and the latissimus dorsi muscle approach each other and pectoralis major muscle is attached to the lateral lip of the bicipital groove and the latissimus dorsi is attached to the medial lip of the bicipital groove leaving only a very narrow place here which is the bicipital groove as the lateral wall of the axilla and there is an apex of the axilla as well if i pass this rod through the axilla it will come out into the neck through the apex of the axilla In this skeleton, we will try to identify the apex of the axilla. Here is the axilla. When I put the rod through the axilla, it appears through the apex of the axilla, entering the neck here. If you look from above, you can identify the apex of the axilla. Here is the apex of the axilla. Anteriorly, in the apex of the axilla lies the posterior surface of the clavicle. Medially lies the lateral border of the first rib and posteriorly lies the superior border of the scapula. Blood vessels and nerves from the neck passing into the upper limb has to pass through the apex of the axilla. This is a deep dissection of the axilla. Try to get yourself oriented to this specimen. This is the skin of the chest. And this is the clavicle. Here is the cut and reflected pectoralis major muscle with the upper limb. In this deep dissection of the axilla, you can identify neurovascular structures. Nerves that you can see here are branches of brachial plexus supplying the upper limb. You can also identify the axillary artery becoming the brachial artery at the lower border of the teres major muscle and lying medial to it the axillary vein again becoming the brachial vena committentus below the lower border of the teres major muscle. Try to identify the branches of the brachial plexus. Here you can see the lateral cord of the brachial plexus lateral to the axillary artery. Medial cord will lie medial to it and the posterior cord will lie posterior to the axillary artery. This is the musculocutaneous nerve. 
It's a branch of the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and it is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the arm. You can see the musculocutaneous nerve entering the muscles of the anterior compartment here. This is the median nerve arising from the lateral cord and the medial cord. This is the ulna nerve. This one. It's a continuation of the medial cord of brachial plexus. And behind, you see a thick nerve here, which is the radial nerve arising from the posterior cord of brachial plexus.